Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Blue Bandito 1929 Ford Street Rod in 124 scale from Monogram. It's kit number 85-4020. With an original parts count in the 80s, this new release has 117 parts molded in blue, white, chrome, and clear, and vinyl tires. It's a skill level 2 kit for intermediate builders. And you may ask, where have I seen this model before? Well, this is a direct reissue of the famous Blue Beetle kit. The original Blue Beetle was issued in 1964, and it's now into triple digits on the internet. Most modelers thought the tooling was gone, but here it is again at a price you can afford. It is a limited production run, so get yours while they last. First, this is the Blue Beetle, as you can tell, with the original parts and the elusive scuba gear. But Ravel had some licensing issues with the original name. So the decal sheet was changed and now it's called the Blue Bandito. And over the years, Ravel had released the kit in different versions. And this one doesn't have, but this one does have all the original parts and a slew of additional custom parts to make a completely different version. It's a 100% step back into nostalgia while the six, of the 60s and in fact uh, the copyright date and some of the parts is 1964. But some of the sprues indicate it was repopped in yellow and silver styrene too. Finish size is a length 6 and 3 8 inches, width 2 and 9 16 inches, and height 2 and 3 16 inches. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But, as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue. But other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. First thing I did for my kit was to spray all the parts with a nice, uh, a good quality automotive primer uh, to give it a good uh, surface for the paint to stick to and uh, eliminate some of the issues with the different colored styrene. I'll deviate a bit from the instructions to get things painted ahead of time. And here are the body parts that uh, you're going to want to grab and, and paint. Uh, at this point, I'm going to paint all the parts uh, with the color coat. And uh, my build will delete certain elements that I don't want to use, but uh, I want to have them available and painted if I decided to use them. So uh, on the cab, there are some mold lines, as you see here with the red arrow. Uh, and you're going to want to remove those and sand those nice and smooth. On the bottom of the bed you'll find some uh, script there in the wood planking uh, and on the fender unit. So remove the script on both of those. I used a razor blade to scrape the script off flat and then sanded them smooth. After you've removed imperfections and mold lines, wet sand the parts with a fine grain uh, grit sandpaper and then um, make sure that all the repairs are done and smooth. And then wet sand the, uh, the surface out again to make it smooth again. Now paint the main color on the body uh, and use a spray uh, if you can. I decided to use a blue that's close to the original color. So this color is a, a Chrysler Basin Street Blue and I painted all the parts inside and out to get ready for the decal work. I decided to go with the Blue Bandito decals and I usually start with the larger decals using plenty of warm water and I suggest you use some of the, uh, the setting solutions available in the market to help it uh, adhere uh, and conform to the contours of the body. You get to choose two options for the uh, motor. So uh, the Roadster has a high rise intake with dual carbs and fin valve covers and the Bandito has six carbs on a low profile intake with blank valve covers. I like the fin valve covers with the six carbs so that's the ones I chose for my build. There's quite a bit of chrome for this uh, motor, so if you don't like all the chrome parts, uh, you can do as I did and then uh, put those in a little bath of bleach and the chrome will come off and you can paint them the color that you like. So assemble the block halves and paint the block blue with an aluminum transmission 
then paint the heads blue, leaving the valve covers chrome, and paint the uh, timing cover blue with an aluminum water pump. Now paint the carbs copper or gold, uh, with the air filters being, uh, you know, chrome, and paint the um, belt flat black, and on the motor paint the starter black with a gold solenoid, and the oil filler cap is black too. Because the motor is in full view, I decided to add uh, some wiring to it from uh, uh, aftermarket product uh, by Morgan Automotive Detail, but you can buy all all kinds of different uh, products for that. In fact, you can even make your own out of some small electrical wire. But um, I drilled out the um, place where the um, distributor was and used uh, the magneto in its place and glued those into place where the spark plug holes are on the motor. Now this kit didn't come with an oil filter, so I fashioned one out of a piece of sprue and then added it to the engine in the place where it should be and painted it orange. It helps the look of the kit, but no bearing on the build overall. Now you can install low carb, those carbs to the intake uh, and install the intake onto the motor. Then add the generator to the belt and add the belt to the motor as well. Now we move to the frame, so assemble the frame and the fenders, and the frame is painted silver with a black battery box and installed in place on the fenders. Glue the motor into place and the exhaust manifolds to the frame and the holes in the fenders. The manifolds are chrome and they can be left as is or stripped and then painted to be more realistic. I left them chrome for the looks. Now you get to choose another option here, either um, you can use the Roadster or the Bandito uh, specific front suspension. Next we'll install that front suspension and it's all chrome and can be left is uh, or painted. I decided to paint it flat black uh, to make it a little less of a show car, more of a Roadster. So install the spring in place on the frame, add the steering bar in place to the frame and the spring, and add the support member from the spring to the transmission. Uh, there's no real positive attachment points here, so use the uh, photos here to kind of help, help you guide to where it should be, but uh, glue it into place where it uh, looks like a good stable spot. Now depending on your tire choice for either the Roadster or the Bandito specific rear suspension, um, you make a decision here and pick which one you need. Then uh, I decided to paint the rear spring flat black, so I stripped that and painted it and you can leave it chrome if you like, um, but install the rear spring and add the drive shaft to the transmission and the axle to the spring. If you're going with the Bandito build, um, you use the Bandito suspension and tires, add the front and rear brakes in place now, and you can skip this if you're building the Roadster. The exhaust is chrome, so you can leave it as is or paint that too. Um, I did the mufflers in red to resemble some Thrush or Cherry Bomb brand mufflers. So add the exhaust in place on the rear axle and then up to the front fender. Again, depending on your build, you use uh, parts for either the Bandito tires or the Roadster tires. And the Bandito tires have a large slick in the back uh, with a front and back rim part and a white wall ring. Now the fronts are skinnies and they take the same setup, but the Roadster set are just bigs and littles with front and rear rim parts. To give the tires a used look, uh, you can press and roll the tread on a sheet of 220 grit paper and kind of rough it up. And this creates a worn surface. And to assemble the Bandito tires, there's two different ways. So the front tires are as follows. Install the white wall ring, add the outer rim, and flip it over to add the inner rim. And then the rear tires go like this. Install the outer rim, add the white wall ring, and flip it over to add the inner rim. Attaching the tires to the car will involve using some spinners. So install the tires onto the pins on the brakes, but don't glue them. Uh, glue only the spinner to the pin, and this will allow the tires to rotate. If you don't want your car to roll, then you can just glue the rim there too. Now the chassis is almost done, and we've done a little detailing here to paint the um, rubber on the fenders, the step fenders, but uh, it's ready to roll and show. Front bumper is optional. So, if you want to use the front bumper, you need these parts for that. I didn't use it on mine, so I won't use them on this build. Uh, but this is the bumper and the frame horns to mount it. Now we can start the interior. Choose between the Bandito seats or the Roadster seats. And if you use the Roadster seat, remove the two pins that the Bandito seats uh, 
those posts there that they go on to in the interior. Once again you have options here at the interior so these are the parts that uh, I chose to use. Now the roadster seat needs to be notched for the roll bar to fit as that is not uh, the normal design so uh, choose your interior and, the, and paint the parts and I did a two-tone flat black and gray so the floor and the top trim are flat black and the side trim and the seat are gray. The pedals are in the shift knob are gray and the bottom of the interior tub is flat. But as you can see here, you can mix and match parts and come up with an entirely new version for your Bandito. Install the roll bar and then the seat and then add the shifter and the pedals. Now slide the whole tub into the cab from the top, uh, from the front first at an angle and then line it up into place. Now pull out the parts for the dash and the windshield and I painted the dash flat black and gray and the steering wheel is black with a black horn button. Install the glass with some white glue or uh, testers clear part cement and installing uh, the wheel then uh, to the column and then slide the column into the dash. Now the window glass doesn't fit precisely into the frame it's a little small so you're left with the option of using a little extra glue uh, there uh, make sure it's the clear glue or uh, cutting a piece of acetate to fill this uh, window space. So uh, install the um, the window windshield unit onto the cab and the steering column will sit in the notch on the firewall. Gather the parts for the um, the cab and the grill and uh, paint the firewall pleating uh, flat black. The electronic boxes on the firewall are silver and install the firewall into the cab front. Paint the radiator flat black and install it into the housing. Install that onto the frame and add the radiator hose to the motor. I wanted to personalize my uh, Bandito a little bit so I went on the internet and found some images that I found would make a nice license plate uh, logo or image and uh, I printed those out on an uh, inkjet color printer and then uh, covered them up with a piece of glossy cellophane tape and cut them out to shape to use for my uh, license tags. Now we'll finish up the front end and uh, we'll start by in installing the headlights to the nacelles there the, uh, with some white glue or some clear, clear glue and then the license tag you know cut that to fit and glue it under the tag holder and that's glued to the light bar. The horn then is glued to the light bar and the light bar is installed on the fenders. Install the radiator cap and the gas cap and glue the step pads to the side steps. Now we'll finish up the back of the Bandito, paint the tail light stop light red, and then cut the uh, plate as I mentioned to add that to the license plate holder, and that attaches to the tail light. Then install the tail lights on each fender and attach the tailgate and install the bed into place. Now you choose between the bed cover uh, for the Bandito or the bed rails for the Roadster, and you paint the bed cover uh, gray if you use that, and paint the rails a wood tone, and add the decals uh, if you use those and the rail braces are silver. Uh, I chose the rails and super glued them into place on the bed. The final part for the truck is the roof and it's an optional part so you can leave it loose to display on or off the truck and then I painted the roof gray and installed the uh, window in the back there with some uh, white glue and to display that just set the roof in place on top of the cab. Now we can work on those uh, optional accessories and uh, the, with the scuba gear and the surfboard so you, you can paint these uh, with whatever option you like um, you can pick the color use uh, references off the internet so I did the flippers breather and mask in black and the air tanks yellow with some black and silver trim and the belt is yellow with a black knife sheath um, the spear gun silver and black and the duffel bag is olive drab uh, flat now the surfboard uh, is white with a paisley decal Because of the many option choices, you're going to have a few extra pieces left over uh, and some decals to add to your uh, stash. Well, there you have it. This build is great fun and a trip down memory lane. And who doesn't love a hot rod surfboard truck? Well, it does have some issues. It's a little simplified and not all of the contact and gluing points are correct. Uh, and there are a little bit of fit and finish issues. You're going to have to clean up some trim and some mold lines. But uh, when, as you can see, when you're done with it, it's going to look great. 
the uh, the surfboard it, it's pretty large for 124 but um, I know they make them big out there in Hawaii so it might be just right the scuba gear was a great addition and um, the models from the 60s and 70s were nowhere detailed as they are in today's kits but uh, the motor is still pretty nice and if you add a few details like we did here uh, you can make it look terrific uh, it's fairly simple but uh, it can shine if you add the detailing like the wires and uh, oil filter to make it stand out the chassis is pretty simple with lots of room to detail the interior is basic but uh, kind of really reflects the way they made hot rods overall the construction straightforward very few problems this uh, could actually just be a weekend build for advanced builders uh, the truck hasn't been available like this since the 60s so uh, if you can still find one on the internet go buy one and put it on your shelf we hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel but you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks!